Do you ever have one of those days when nothing seems to go your way? You're having problems one after the other after the other and they just don't stop. Well, I have those too. So I'm often talking about my clients overcoming adversity. I'm going to share with you one week where I had seven problems, major, huge, bank breaking, money breaking, health breaking, life breaking problems. I'm going to share with you how I tackled them. I'm going to share with you the model I used and I'm going to tell you what you can do if you're having one of those. Stay tuned. Let's get into the video. Hey guys, my name's Yahya. I am the founder and creator of Record Breaker, where I help you shatter past your highest ever revenue record months in the shortest amount of time. And a couple of weeks ago, my life was literally a living hell. Let's rewind back. It all started on my birthday, right? So everyone's excited. Everyone's happy. It's the day before my birthday and my computer crashes. My office computer with all my work crashes completely. It is impossible to recover the data. And I'm left there stumbling and mumbling and wondering what the hell to do. The next day, I have a problem where my neighbor shows up. He's had an altercation with one of my employees, one of my staff members, and he wants to get the cops involved. And I have to jump in and resolve the issue. The day after that, I fall down and I severely injure my back, which stops me from doing basic movements, which stops me from basically even sitting. The day after that, my bank informs me that there's a major problem with my account and my payment processor at the same time informs me that I need to fix a lot of things on their end. The day after that, I burn my hand. Major second degree burns, essentially completely stopping me because I couldn't move with my back, stopping me from even using my hands. The day after that, my car breaks down. I have to rent a car and very soon with the rented car, I get into a car accident. All of this in the span of one week, every single day. Something with the other kept popping up. You know how they say problems come in pairs of three? Well, for me, they came in a flock of seven. So I'm gonna share with you how I tackled every single problem, the lesson I learned, the tool I used, and how I solved the problem. So the first problem, when my computer crashed, I now had a choice. It was the weekend of my birthday. My family wanted to celebrate with me. We had a nice fancy dinner and then I excused myself and I said, guys, I need to fix this. I need to fix this over the weekend because I start work on Monday. So what did I do? I went through the motions. I went to, I couldn't recover my data, so I had to restart fresh. But what I didn't do was I didn't create a negative narrative around it. I didn't think about the fact that on my birthday, I was sitting and I was restoring and fixing and reinstalling and getting all the things done to be able to work on Monday. And here's where I deployed the principle of the do have be model. Now the do have be model dictates that you do something you hate. In my case, having to fix my computer to have something that you want in my case to restore my working computer so i could work and then be to be happy or be satisfied or be just basically content so the do have be model is pretty flawed it dictates to a person that you do something you don't like doing so you're, you're feeling bad throughout it you have a horrible narrative ah oh, it's my birthday i'm doing this crap why couldn't things be better i hate myself blah 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 no, none of that I didn't create any narrative. There was no emotional baggage for me to deal with. I just went about fixing what I needed to fix. There was no narrative. So I switched from the do have be model to the be do have model. The be do have model is you be happy now, or you be content now. You do what needs to be done, which meant fixing what I had to fix to have the result, which means I had a functional system two days later. So case in point, more often than not, when life strikes us with adversity, we create an entire narrative around it because we have to deal with the adversity anyway. But while we're dealing with the adversity, we don't need that negative chatter in our head. We don't need that bad emotion because that's, that's truly what saps our energy. Doing the thing doesn't really make us tired. Thinking about it, feeling it, regretting it, lamenting it, all of that makes us tired. So that's lesson number one. You can have a problem and you can fix a problem, but there need not be emotional baggage around a problem. There need not be a negative, a false narrative around the problem. Lesson number two, when I burnt my hand, I basically spilt burning hot wax on fire on my left hand, which is my, my dominant hand. So here's how the wax fell on my hand. I was carrying a candle jar. The entire jar was a light. It was the whole jar was on flames and a tiny flick came on my hand and involuntarily I just flick my hand I just moved my hand and then the entire the entire wax just completely coated my hand now here's the thing when the wax coated my hand what was my instinctive response I'd been trained as a child we used to have those long candlesticks and once in a while a spot of wax would fall on our hand and we let it cool down we, we did nothing because it would immediately cool down so I'm there standing there with burning wax on my hand watching the skin burn on my hand waiting for the wax to cool down why Trauma response. When we are undergoing trauma, we're not thinking, we're just acting. So that to me was highly traumatic because if any of you has ever felt what a burn feels like, it's one of the worst feelings. I've had accidents, I've had injuries, I've had major things in life. 
Burn is one of the top three, I'd say, in terms of pay. So while I was going through that, my mind wasn't thinking. My mind was referring back to the past, picking up learned behavior, wait for the wax to cool down, and then deploying it. And it took like a couple of minutes before I went and I spoke to my wife. She told me, no, you're supposed to wash it, held it under water, but by that time, damage was done. So what I learned here is, unless we change the behavior that we've internalized when something goes wrong, we're always going to act the same way we did the first time around. Whether it's smart or not, whether it's logical or not, whether it serves us or not, regardless. And this strengthened in me the fact that we are run on a daily basis by our trauma. And so obviously I do a lot of trauma work, just not just with myself, but every single person I work with, because more often than not, making a lot of money is not, is not about putting in the right actions. It's making sure you don't put in the wrong actions that your trauma has taught you to sort of do. Lesson number three. When the money problem started, I reached out, I spoke to my accountant, I spoke to other people in the space, got their advice on what to do, how to go about it, what to handle, etc., etc., etc. But I did not panic because I've noticed in myself, every time I panic, I tend to make stupid dumb, wrong decisions. The day it happened, I basically did nothing. I slept over it. I spoke to a couple of people and I slept over it. I let the information from all the people sink in. I let that data assimilate in my head and I let an intelligent solution that came to me the next day and then the next day and then the next day. I kept collecting information from people who'd been through it before, from people who'd had those problems before, from people I trust. And I got all that information, I assimilated it. And then I started speaking to the relevant parties. And yes, it was solved. It took a week, a week and a half, it was solved. So more often than not, when we have a panic response to something, it is probably the worst response. Yes, it's an immediate response. And the reason we do it is because we want to address the panic. And that's the lesson here. You can be feeling anxiety, but you do not need to act on it. Because when we act is when we kind of sabotage ourselves. Is that that's when we screw up. That's when we make the dumb decisions. So I stopped. I, I wanted to. I really wanted to act. But I stopped. I was like, nope, yeah, you've learned your lesson. Sleep over it. Slept over it for a couple of days, assimilated the information, then took action problem solved. Now, coming back to the burn wound, when I burnt my hand and I injured my back, it was pretty difficult to go through my daily day. Now, here's why. I'm left-handed. And when you burn your left hand, your dominant hand, essentially, we're doing 90, 99% of things with our dominant hand. So not only did I have an injured hand, I was also operating from my non-dominant hand, causing me to have to learn simple things like putting on my shirt. I needed help to do that. So what it taught me was I would be working out and I do a lot of these physical things to put myself in physical discomfort, but I hadn't truly been in physical discomfort for a while. And I'm huge on discomfort. So I looked at it not as, oh, poor me, what am I going to do now? I'm injured. Oh, woe is me. No, I was like, well, this is an opportunity to kind of practice being out of my comfort zone. I use that opportunity to kind of enjoy the growth spurt that comes from operating a place where you're not familiar with anything. It's completely, you know, new alien territory and you have to kind of relearn things. It was an interesting experience, but the cool part is because I didn't mull over it. The first question I asked my wife was, how long is it going to take to heal? Because I need to work out. I need to record. I need to do this, that, you. And my wife, she was like, well, it, you'll be fine in the morning. In the morning when I woke up, boom, my whole hand had swollen up, boils, this, that, and the other on my hand. And then my wife tells me, well, uh, you know, I told you that because I, I didn't want to worry you. <laughs> The cool part is, I was told by the doctors it would take six weeks to heal. In three weeks, I was back training in the gym. Training in the gym. Forget about using the keyboard. I was back training. Now, that's a whole different story on how I optimize my health to speed up healing. If you're interested in speeding up healing, improving immunity and all those things, let me know in the comments. I'll create a whole video on how I get my clients to heal injuries very quickly. Now, the fifth thing was adapting and optimizing. And this was weird because the day after I, I had my accidents, I went to the doctors and I told them in a couple of days, I was like, guys, I don't know why I'm low energy. I'm sleepy all the time. My brain is not working very well. I get tired very quickly. There's a lot of fatigue. There's general malaise. And then I was informed, Yaya, dear sweet Yaya, you are right now a patient. You are recovering from a massive injury. A second degree burn is not funny. It's not fun in games. It takes a while. And because it takes a while, it takes a toll on the body to recover. I was like, well, interesting. So I'm not going to be able to do everything I do in a day. This is where I had to use the 80-20 rule and figure out what were 20% of things that I absolutely had to get done and did those. So I optimized my energy. I adapted my workflow because there's a lot of stuff I do in a typical day. So I was like, no, yeah, you're going to speed up recovery. You're going to do the absolute bare minimum that needs to be done. But the bare minimum is going to be 20%. It's going to be the most important 20%. The next lesson and probably the most important lesson is the negative energy spiral. And this is something I had to catch myself doing because, you know, one, two, three problems, problems, problems. Now, these were 
irregular problems. These weren't problems that pop up all the time. And when they kept popping up in succession, my mind went for a bit of a drive in a place that's not so beautiful. And my mind started going into the what if territory because my mind was going there. My energy started to spiral down. So my emotional state started to go down. And invariably, when we're thinking negatively and we're feeling badly, we start attracting more problems because our mind starts focusing on what's wrong with this situation? What do I need to watch out here? I hope the same problem doesn't repeat itself. So we forget about growing and we start focusing on problem prevention. We start focusing on firefighting. We start focusing on trauma prevention because, you know, it's pretty traumatic to burn your hand. <laughs> it's pretty traumatic to have your financials get messed up in a week. So this is the mistake that I see my, that I made myself. But this is the mistake I see a lot of entrepreneurs making. They get more involved and they put more focus into problem prevention than growing. And I had to catch myself. I got on a client call with somebody who's a healer. She's she's in tune with energy. She does a lot of energy work. She does a lot of quantum work. And she told me, you know, Yaya, all your chakras are black right now. And everything that you've been through, do you think you attracted it because you were in the negative loop? Or because you were in the net negative loop, did it happen? I was like, I don't know, probably 50-50. But that was a wake up call for me. And that was a, yeah, snap the hell out of it. Start focusing on growth. These are minor setbacks. These things happen. Do not make the mistake of mulling about them. Do not make the mistake of getting into problem prevention because your job is to grow. It's not to watch out and just make sure, oh, nobody hurts me. Even if somebody hurts you, even if something happens, you're good enough, you're strong enough, you will be fine. And that's the route I took. And that's probably the most important lesson for entrepreneurs today. We get too fixated. We get too focused on the problems and the adversities and the challenges, and we do not focus on the opportunities. And that's my lesson for you guys today. The six things I learned from these seven days in absolute hell. I hope it's helped you. I'm out of here. I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.